as many may know who have watched uh, some of my past videos about food and nutrition, one of the meals that I like from Indian restaurants is chana masala, right? And it's a very simple meal in some cases, right? And it's chickpeas and a great flavorful sauce and spices, right? And so you get garbanzo beans and you put them together in a nice mixture, right? So I've been getting my chickpeas from Whole Foods because that's been the lowest price I've been able to obtain chickpeas or garbanzo beans. Well, I found a new source for garbanzo beans and I've been able to get two pounds of um, chickpeas for $3.50. Kabuli Chana is the name of these chickpeas because chickpeas come in different varieties, right? They come in different species. There's different types of chickpeas, right? And so I was able to get Kabuli Chana, which when you look at the nutritional profile, um, it's not bad. Three grams of fiber. And we got 6% um, iron, 2% calcium, right? So pretty awesome. I haven't cooked with these yet. So I'm still um, getting them ready for the soaking process. And then I also found kala chana. So kala chana is a dark brown chickpea with a different nutrient profile. 50% iron, 10% vitamin C, 40% calcium. So it actually has more minerals and nutrients than regular uh, chickpeas, right? And so we do have a little bit of sodium, natural sodium, right? Which is not, not a problem. And then we got uh, 35 grams of fiber, right? And we also have natural sugars. So this should be a very savory chickpea uh, once it's prepared properly, right? So I thought that was pretty cool. And then I didn't know that green chickpeas actually existed, right? So it's like, oh man, wow. So let's let's experiment with that and see what we got there. And what is this nutrient nutrient profile? It has 15% iron, has 8% potassium. And then you got um, five grams of fiber, two grams of natural sugars, and 30 grams of natural sodiums. So if you rotate through these beans, right, you'll actually end up with a broad nutrient profile. And so don't get it mistaken from my previous video on fruit that all I do is fruit. No, it's a mixture of vegetables and fruits and a little bit of legumes, which over time I will probably reduce down my consumption of legumes but to the extent that i continue to eat beans this and lentils will be will be it that's it so um this is a great little um, set of beans that i have here that i plan to mix up with uh, some ginger some garlic and i'm also going to um, use some natural additives in the form of, you know, uh, coconut milk. And I like this, um, this particular brand of coconut milk because out of all the coconut milks that I've looked for, this one has the simplest number of ingredients, right? So as far as what I can readily and easily get, this has the simplest number of ingredients. So I go with that coconut milk, right? And it's just fine. And then finally, I have found a tomato sauce that I can deal with, right? This particular one, no salt added tomato sauce, non-GMO, right? And 15 milligrams of sodium. And I got a little bit more to say about that coming up. All right, today let's talk about tomato sauce. So you see all kinds of options with tomato sauce, right? And I'm out here and I'm looking at the different, you know, uh, options on tomato sauce, right? And so I've been through this a dozen times. And what I found is that if you're going to do this, then you got a couple of options, right? Like this tomato paste, 
right? I would actually go for this, first of all. It has non-GMO project certified, right? And then the other thing I like is that the ingredients are simple. Tomato paste, right? And citric acid. And then what I like most of all is that the sodium is 25 milligrams, right? Whereas in other cases, you got sodium that's like 300 or 500 milligrams. In my opinion, you don't need that much sodium, right? But the sauce that I go for, and it took me a while to find this, is this one right here. No salt added tomato sauce, non-GMO, right? And it is um, tomato puree, water, and you got a few spices, right? And it doesn't say natural flavors, right? You always watch out when it says natural flavors. This doesn't do that. This has just the straight ingredients and look, 15 milligrams of sodium. So I've cooked with this and I found it acceptable to my system. It works, I haven't had any blowback. Um, so I would definitely go that way. And then, you know, there are other brands out here, right? You know, if you, if you look around, you'll find some, some uh, other, you know, paste with no salt added, right? It's like a needle in the haystack. You gotta uh, hunt for it, right? No pun intended to what I just showed. But um, yeah, so, you know, if you're looking for a good recommendation on a tomato sauce that you wanna add, like if you're trying to create like a um, Indian style tikka masala, right? Tomato factors in that. And that's real, the real reason why I went this way is so that I can combine this with coconut milk and create a good uh, sauce, right? And so you can do it that way or you can do it with uh, tomato paste. Um, I just think that tomato sauce is a little easier to work with, right? And so, and also um, I like the price on this, right? So I think this is 67 cents per can, right? And so, um, and you can get the, and I like the size of this, right? Because, you know, um, I don't like the larger cans because it's like, you don't need every, you don't need all of this, right? For a single meal. And so it's like, you know, you want it just in, you want it in a convenient, because you can like save some of this, but then you have issues of uh, spoilage and you got to use it the next day and all that kind of stuff. Whereas here, this is a, this is one serving per meal, um, you know, and so it cooks well with everything. And this combined with coconut milk um, is a great alternative to uh, vegetable broth or water or whatever. And so you can cook directly with this, right? And there are plenty of cooking shows out there, like Young Man Cooking, that shows all of that. So um, I highly recommend this, right? And um, I think uh, I don't think you can go wrong with something like this, where there's no salt added, the ingredients are straightforward, and it's non-GMO. Oh, and here's another good one. This is uh, artichoke hearts, right? Non-GMO and simple ingredients, right? And um, artichokes are said to be very beneficial to you in terms of health. Now, one thing I will say is that this does have 260 milligrams of sodium. So what you'll probably want to do, or what I'm going to do, is I'm going to run this through some spring water to dilute out the sodium, reduce the sodium, right? But this is a great way to get artichokes into your meals, right? Once you've uh, cleaned out the sodium and... Um, you know, and reap the health benefits accordingly. So as you can see, great nutrition is indeed possible and we can do it on a budget and we can find it from places that are um, very surprising, right? Uh, places that are not known for having good, healthy nutritional additives. But if we keep our eyes open and we look for opportunities, I stumbled on these opportunities, um, you know, by accident. I didn't research them. I just happened to be, um, you know, at Walmart and at a um, at a particular uh, Indian um, market, right? And um, I found these items, and it was like, oh, okay. Um, here are some great items that I've been looking for, and they were affordable. And um, we're going to see how well they work in a good nutritional. Uh, mix up in terms of the uh, food I'm able to prepare and I will uh, I, I will keep you updated and so thank you for tuning in thank you for um, going through this journey with me and I will see you on the other side